Today on Earth Focus, saving rhinos in Kruger National Park. Jeff Barbie reports from South Africa. Coming up on Earth Focus. A rhino is shot for its horn every seven hours in South Africa. The battle is between heavily armed poaching gangs from communities around the Kruger National Park and military-style ranger units using the latest technology. This new bush war took the country by surprise, but new tactics are starting to change the nature of the conflict. According to aerial counts, the park is home to around 12,000 rhinos, roughly half the world's remaining population. Julian Rademeyer is the author of the book Killing for Profit. He's traveled the globe in search of the facts behind the current rhino poaching crisis. Uh, roughly 3,800 rhinos have been killed in South Africa alone since the current po poaching crisis hit in 2008. Uh, by contrast, the pre the, that's 10 times the number of rhinos that were killed in the preceding 27 years. Uh, roughly 25 to 30 tons of rhino horn has gone out of the country to the black markets of Southeast Asia. And the killing seems unstoppable. Every single year we see a new, a grim new record being set. The grim record for South Africa sits at 1,215 dead rhinos in last year alone. I don't think we're on top of it. I, I think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Three days ago, poachers shot this rhino here in the Kruger National Park. Today, I'm with Kruger's version of the CSI, Crime Scene Investigations Unit, and they're here to find out exactly how this rhino was killed, what direction the bullets came from, and if possible, recover those bullets so that they lead to a successful prosecution in the courts. The trail of evidence must be robust, or else the poachers who are caught will simply walk away. According to the Worldwide Fund for Nature, in the last two years, more than 430 poachers have been arrested. But South African courts have only secured 25 high-level convictions. Poachers are shot on sight in many African countries, but South Africa does not allow the practice, and rangers who kill a poacher in a gun battle are sometimes arrested themselves. Opa David Manzini has worked for Kruger's Crime Scene Investigation Unit on more than a thousand rhino poaching incidents. He searches the carcass with a metal detector to find the bullet so that it can hopefully lead to an arrest. If we find those eggs which, which is a bullet, we photograph it and mark it and put it in an exhibit bag and seal it. From there, we open a docket at the police station where the bullet will be sent to the plastics. It's a long shot, but just like a murder scene, the unique markings on the bullet might be matched back to a rifle found later in a poacher's possession. While at the carcass, the team also collects unique genetic samples for DNA profiling and sends it to Dr. Cindy Harper's team at the Veterinary Genetics Lab at the University of Pretoria. We developed a technique which allows us to do a fingerprint, DNA fingerprint, of a rhinoceros horn directly from the horn. And of course that gives you the opportunity to match that horn back to a carcass that it came from. And that's extremely important to investigators because now when you find a trafficker or a poacher with a horn in their possession, you don't just um, sentence them or convict them or prosecute them for possession. You can actually prosecute them now for the crime that they committed, which is the poaching, because you can link that horn back to a poaching incident. It's fairly easy to catch a poacher, but it's much more difficult to secure a conviction in the courts. And it's virtually impossible to catch the buyers and sellers in East Asian markets who are driving the slaughter. But Dr. Harper believes this new technique will help to change that. So what the project is trying to achieve, and I think the ultimate aim of this project would be is to prosecute um, end-level consumer or dealer, particularly the dealers, by linking them back to a crime that was committed in the original country in which the rhino was poached. Countries in Africa with 90% of the world's rhino population have joined the project. They hope to build a database of every rhino in the world to stop organized crime from profiting from the trade. And the trade is huge. 
a kilogram of rhino horn may sell for up to $100,000, making it one of the most valuable substances in the world, more expensive than cocaine, heroin, platinum, or gold. Millions of people live in poverty within 50 kilometers of the park. When jobs are scarce and people are excluded from the park management system, they poach. If you look at the rhino horn today, it's, uh, it's worth more than gold. So it's like you, you got, you know, it, it, the trade, the rhino trade is huge. The organized uh, uh, crimes that they're dealing with all this, you know, they, uh, they're willing to pay as much as they can, you know, as long as you can provide them with a horn. A guy on the street who doesn't have a job and you tell him that, look, I'm gonna give you 50,000 rand for doing one, two, three for me. They would uh, definitely do it for you. Hundreds of poachers have been shot in South Africa. Every time a poacher is killed, the community he comes from turns against the park. Ubisi, like many other officials, says the poaching will never be stopped by killing or arresting the poachers. There is always another to take that one's place. So the young people out there, they need to see this jewel that, okay, Having a nature reserve or a, um, a Kruger National Park, it's to their advantage. Ubisi hopes that jobs like his will grow in number and start to employ more young people who otherwise would have joined the poachers. And one day they must come and take my job. I need somebody that's going to fold these shoes that I'm wearing now. It turns out that the person who may one day fill Ubisi's shoes may not be a man at all. On the far western boundary of Kruger's fence, right on the community front line, one project is starting to make a big difference. The man who started it is Warden Craig Spencer. He likes to think out of the box. But we're not going to police the problem away. We might be able to hold back the tide for a short period like we've done in the past. We buy ourselves a window of opportunity. But then when the pressure is off, we relax again. Now, here's the problem. Every time it comes back, it's twice as bad as it was the previous time, yet we're still using the same rusty old tools to fight that battle. One of the overlooked problems of rhino poaching is the massive injection of money into very poor communities. This money creates a false economy and destabilizes traditional income streams with drugs, prostitution, and a get-rich-quick mentality, explained Spencer. There's this Robin Hood perception that has developed. The the crime syndicates have moved into the communities and we've watched the social decay happen and the false economy develop. And this is the, the most frightening part of this entire rhino poaching thing. So we've got a, a, a high level of social decay and a false economy has developed. Now you can imagine those guys that were herding cattle yesterday are now driving fancy BMWs and watching TV on flat screen televisions and tomorrow there's no rhinos left. Are they going to say, oh, well, that's just too bad. I'll go back to grazing cattle. I think not. They're going to find another way to maintain that level of lifestyle. And we've allowed that to happen. We've allowed the false economy to develop because we're too busy running around inside the borders of our park trying to shoot poachers. So what has happened now is the Robin Hood philosophy has developed in those communities. They see a uniformed official and they think we're like the sheriff of Nottingham, yet the Poacher is Robin Hood, stealing from the rich to pay to the poor. He's the hero of the community. They prop him up, they hide him away from the police. Spencer's solution? Employ ladies from nearby villages, train them as guards, and deploy them into the park. I'm here with the Black Mamba's All Ladies Anti-Poaching Unit. We're in Balule, which is actually right where the Kruger fence hits civilization in a lot of communities where there's lots of people coming into the park now to poach all sorts of things, including rhinos. So we went into the communities and we solicited 26 of the young African women from those communities and trained them up in the anti-poaching role, kitted them out, deployed them into the field. They protect our borders. It's never been done before, but already it's a huge success. The reserve has not lost a rhino in 11 months, while a neighboring reserve using the old model has lost 23. The difference, according to Spencer, is community involvement. And although it's got a law enforcement theme, the actual hidden agenda, if you wish, is to engage the community. And we particularly targeted women because we believe that the women have got a nurturing attitude towards life. 
The time around a full moon used to be one of the busiest times for poachers to enter into the reserve. This image of a small poaching team taken with a secret remote camera is one of the very first looks at a real-time image of how these teams operate. In front is a gunman with a 9mm pistol to shoot rangers or wild animals. Following him is the man with the saw to cut off the horn, and last is the rifleman with a high-powered hunting rifle. To prevent incursions like this, the Black Mambas patrol on foot and by Land Rover, day and night. They stop often to be quiet and listen, and they have effectively shut down the full moon poaching operations that plagued the park. At night with a spotlight, when we are patrolling, we want to let them know that we are here, so then they can run away. Spencer believes that like British bobbies on the beat, the Black Mambas are a visual policing deterrent. Since they are unarmed, they are unlikely to be shot at by armed gangs from their own communities. On their patrols, they talk with local people, conduct searches of cars, they patrol the outside of the fence, and they go out and get the community involved and excited about being part of the park. I don't want to be one of the poachers. I want to fight. I want to fight for the rhinos, because our future children, they won't see it if they are busy killing the rhinos. But if we work together as a community and we work together with the police, we can work this out. Two weeks ago at a roadblock like this one, a group of poachers was found hiding in the trunk of a car and promptly arrested. 22-year-old Lita Mishabella is tasked sometimes to sit with the rhinos if poachers have been spotted so that then she can radio in the armed patrols if the poachers turn up to kill them. I think my, my, my responsibility is to protect those, those rhinos and to, to, to make sure that they are protected and other people may see it. In case of trouble with armed poaching gangs, the Mambas are backed up by heavily armed rangers from a private anti-poaching group called ProTrack. For now, it's mostly men who go through this intensive basic training course, learning bushfighting skills and how to handle firearms. Soon, a new group of Black Mambas will train here and bring their new skills to the job. Wire snares like these kill as many rhino as gunfire, but the Mambas have tackled this problem too. The ladies pulled out up to 60 snares a day on their patrols. Now we haven't found a single snare in 10 months. Now that they've been deployed for two years, the Mambas are going on a charm offensive in the communities, pushing the reserve's boundary out to include the places that the poachers come from. They're incredible. Now we've moved outside the park, so we spend about 60% of our Black Mambas' times in what we call the buffer zone, in those tribal lands on the boundary of the national park. So I like to think that you shouldn't be waiting for that problem to enter the reserve. You should rather be taking it off reserve, interacting with the community outside there, for these women, it's not only about saving rhinos, but securing a future for everyone who is impacted by the current poaching crisis. I think what it will be in future, it will be great for me to see lots of black members joining us. It was a hard training, but we managed to do it. I'm a woman, I'm going to get older, we'll have a baby. When will my baby learn about a rhino? You can tell them that we are protecting this thing for the next generation. This is Jeffrey Barbie reporting for Link TV from the Greater Kruger National Park in South Africa. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV.
connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.